Hello. Great. It's Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy. Nice to see you. How are you today? Today, we're going to look at the interesting topic um, for IELTS speaking of animals, right? Now, animals, we'll be looking at, which hand is it? It's this hand. <laughs> animals. We'll be looking at different kinds of animals, different topics related to animals. Um, indeed, I think today we'll look at um, pets, zoos, wild animals. And there is, these are all kind of topics that will come up in IELTS speaking and also in your everyday life, right? You may need to speak to people about pets and zoos, wild animals, maybe, depending where you live. If you live in the middle of a city, maybe not so much. But we'll look at some language pronunciation, some idioms, all the usual good, meaty stuff. Great. Talking of animals, um, you know, I, I like dogs, but we have a dog over there, right? And when the neighbours go out, he's like yelping and crying and howling like minute after minute after minute. And as much as I like dogs, when you hear that repeated all the time, oh, it's like a drip of water to your forehead. Man, drives you mad. But never mind. Today, we're going to look at language. So good morning to all of you. Hello to uh, Gulsafa, the girly, hi, Malika, Huang, Sasirek, Muhammad, um, Raman Physio 12. Nice handle. Emily, nice to see you. Reg Wana, Jaspreet, Kaustab, Angel. Um, who else have we got? Let me see. Zulfiye, nice to see you as well. Bushra, Anis, lots of people. Anybody from Facebook? That's interesting. Nobody from Facebook. That makes me worry a bit. Been waiting for me, God's little warrior. Good, I've been waiting for you too. And now, nice that you're here. If it's the first time here for you, just to let you know, my name is Keith. Um, I run the website uh, Keith Speaking Academy. And just so you know where that is, right? It's here. Um, www.keithspeakingacademy.com. Um, the website is being built up slowly. I know, very slowly, but it is be being built up with more stuff. And indeed, after the class, you can go there, there, and get the notes from our live classes. So all of that's going on. Also, just to let you know, if you're interested in um, coming along to the Facebook group, it's Keith's Mastermind Community for IELTS Speaking, the longest name in the world. And it's a great place to look for a speaking partner, to practice answering questions, to get some really interesting materials. Again, not just from me, but it's the whole community of people who are sharing ideas and sharing the love. Brilliant. So who have we got here? Maura from Vancouver. Hello there. Nice to see you. Um, me happy. That's not me happy. That's somebody here. Me happy says, did I change my logo? Almost. So I've chosen. Thank you so much, actually, to all of you. There were hundreds of comments about helping me choose the logo. Um, and clearly, by far, by far the most popular was number one. Um, so, yes, I'm going for logo number one. We're making a small change to the font a little bit, but that will be the new logo coming out later today. Hooray! <laughs> so thank you, all of you, for that. Um, while I'm on the thank yous as well, can I just say um, a quick thank you very, very much to... To, 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 to who? To Xiao Qing Ma, who has helped with a donation to, to sponsor the work that I do. Really appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Every little bit helps. So here we are um, looking at animals. Let's see who else is in. Joe Morgan from Dubai. I bet it's hot there, right? So we're missing that small paint behind you. Well, that one. <laughs> It's still there. Right. Good afternoon. Of course, for me, it's still morning. Sun is rising. Beautiful day. Um, but for a lot of you guys, it's actually afternoon. Do we get interactive speaking sessions? Ishika? No, not well. It depends what you mean. You get to interact in this class by typing. 
but not by speaking. Um, I don't at the moment do any kind of large group speaking activities. I don't have the time at the moment. Um, Namaste Guru. Amrit, thank you very, very much. <laughs> I know Namaste because I do yoga sometimes and all the yoga teachers, for some reason, at the end of their yoga, they go, oh, Namaste, Namaste, have a great day even though they're American or English speaking. So Namaste is quite popular. It's quite trendy in um, in over here in England and, and the West. And Guru, of course, I know, right? Guru is a teacher. Right. Farshid, your face is your logo. Seriously? <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Right. Brilliant. brilliant. So Petra, high, deep, boiling where you are. Right. Nice and mild climate where I am. <laughs> Brilliant. So let's kick off, right? Let's have a look at the topic of animals today. Um, I'm going to begin actually with a bit of vocabulary. But before I do that, right, let, let's ask, let's, no, let me ask you a simple question. Um, which animal do you like? Right? Which animal or animals do you like and be really careful with your answer because this is the number one mistake everybody makes talking about animals so think before you type don't give me the animal give me a sentence i like blah blah blah, blah. i i really like blah, blah blah give me a phrase tell me which animals or animal you really like and let's see who's on the ball <laughs> right oh very nice okay great muhammad says i adore dogs valentine as well i'm crazy about dogs brilliant um goldfish ah, interesting english with wab <laughs> english with wab hello cats great oh now then elephant interesting now they I like dog. Okay, angel or angel. Maybe it's angel. Is it angel Jose? Um, I like dog. I'm going to pick you out because you're the first one, but this is really, really good. Thank you very much for this because it introduces me to the first point, right? When we're talking about animals we like, we cannot say, I like dog. I like cat, right? Um, because you're talking generally about all dogs or all cats, right? So you have to say, I like dogs and that's the first thing i want to point out today um because it's the number one mistake right examiners ask which animals do you like i like dog i like elephant i like cat <laughs> no i like dogs i like elephants right because you're speaking generally if you're speaking about one dog like my dog then you say i like my dog right i like my dog or I like my neighbor's dog. Oh, I don't. I hate my neighbor's dog. No, I don't hate my neighbor's dog. I hate my neighbor because he or she is the one who goes out all day and leaves the dog. <laughs> I'll stop the rant. I'll stop moaning and complaining. So Angel, Angel, thank you very much for that. That's great. It points out the first thing, right? Viennard, orangutan. Interesting, right? Great. Um, so Nimko Katishik, same problem, right? Exactly the same thing. So all of you, be on the ball, be aware, be on the ball, like be um, be aware of this. I like cats. Excellent, great. Kylie's got a nice little expression. Uh, cat for sure, cats for sure, right? I'm a cat person. That's a nice expression, right? I'm a cat person. It doesn't mean you're like um. I don't know, super cat, like a superhero. It just means you like cats. I'm a dog person, right? Uh, Purva says, I like cats. I have a pet named, I have a pet named Zu, Zue, Zu, Zu, Su. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I imagine your cat can't speak, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Jane picking it up. Brilliant. I'm a dog person. Fantastic. Alexander, this is nice. I do like tigers. Nice use of do to give emphasis. I do like tigers. Nice. 
The girly says, I like pets, generally speaking. Um, now, Rabbi, this is also interesting. I adore cats too much. So I adore cats. Fantastic. But why do you say too much? Because too much means it's not a good thing, right? I eat too much. I'm getting fat. It's not good. I adore cats too much means it's bad. It's a negative thing. So, and I'm not sure why that would be negative. I suppose you mean I adore cats so much, right? I I think, tell me if I'm wrong, but be really careful with the too much because too much is negative, really negative. I adore cats too much. Um, and so therefore I collect them and I've got 20,000 in my house. That's too, yeah, that's negative. But otherwise, I, I adore cats so much, right? <laughs> I'm into dog. <laughs> Why am I laughing? I'm laughing because when we use dog like the singular, it sounds like the food, right? I'm into fish. I'm into chicken. You're talking about the food. I'm into dog. Maybe you do. Maybe it's one of your favorite dishes, possibly. But because we're talking not so much about eating animals today, we're talking more about pets, zoos and wild animals. Well, I'm into dogs, right? Talk about the, the animals we like. I'm into dogs. Brilliant. So some great answers there and you've brought up some really, really nice things. Wow, this is not funny. It's interesting as in, right, it says, I like ducks and ducklings. I used to have a duck and her name was Queen. Great. Fantastic. Very, very interesting. OK, so listen, let me move in to a little bit of vocabulary. So some basics here. Um, I'm going to come over here. I'm bring this over a little bit and hopefully you can see that. I hope so. So I like giraffe, right? Now, we, we had this from Angel and others. I like giraffe no right i like giraffes it must be that s i like giraffes i like dogs i like elephants right that's nice you can also of course say i, I adore uh, i'm somebody said i'm into or i'm a da, 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 person right i am a cat person, for example, right? Some nice expressions there. We're talking about pets. So we're going to talk about pets as well today. Just a couple of interesting idioms. This is not about animals, but it's about the word pet, right? Um, and we use it in two interesting idioms. I have a pet hate people speaking whilst listening. A pet hate is something I hate a lot, right? Simple as that. Something I hate a lot, we call it a pet hate. It's kind of the idea that this hate is with you all the time, every day, like a dog or a cat. It's with you all the time. So something you hate a lot, you can say, I have a pet hate, and then say what it is. I have a pet hate. Neighbours leaving their dog alone. Oh, no, I have a better one. I have a pet hate is dogs pooing in the street and the neighbours not cleaning up the poo, <laughs> right? Another expression is, I was the teacher's pet, which you may have heard of. The teacher's pet is the teacher's favourite. So if the teacher really liked you at school, then you would be the teacher's pet and all the other uh, students would be <laughs> really angry with you. Right, let me get rid of these one moment. I'm going to come back into the picture over here. So teacher's pet. Excellent. Um, just moving down, we're going to talk about zoos today as well. So just a quick introduction, some vocabulary around zoos, um, different kinds of animals. We talk about species. It's a very hard word to say. It's a s, species. So there's a spee, she's, she's, species, right? It's a bit like spee and then she's. 
It's a bit like that, right? Species. So it's an S and a SH. Try and say it with me. Species. Species. There are many different species. Okay, good. In fact, the E is a bit shorter. It's a species. Okay. Capture. Obviously, in the zoo, we have animals that we have captured or taken um, or caught. So it's similar, similar to caught or to catch <clears throat> as a verb. Um, but it's used a lot in talking about animals that we, we <clears throat> catch. So to capture an animal and then animals are kept in captivity. So notice capture and say this with me because it's again, it's pronunciation is so important. Capture. Capture. Captivity. Can you see where the stress has changed from capture to captivity? Captivity. And always with new words, learn the collocation or the grammar, right? If you like, it's in captivity, in captivity. The prisoner was in captivity. The animals are kept in captivity. Try that with me. Animals are kept in captivity. Good. It's a bit of a tongue twister, right? There's lots of k and per. Kept, kept in captivity. A nice tongue twister. There you go. Didn't even realise. Kept in captivity. Nice. Practice that with your children. Cage is obviously the box with the the with the what the rods where the animals are kept in captivity. Animals are kept in captivity in cages. Whoa, that's a great one, right? Animals are kept in captivity in cages. Think. Cats. There you go. Cats are kept in captivity in cages. <laughs> Say that 20 times quickly. Cage is the noun. Caged is the adjective. Let me just put this over here so it's clear. It's sad to see caged animals. Caged. Caged. Caged animals. Link the animals. Caged animals. Nice. Finally, endangered, right? So we can save endangered animals. Literally, animals in danger. So literally, we take the in, danger, and we create a word, an adjective. It is endangered, right? It comes slightly from in to en, endangered. We can save endangered animals. Okay, brilliant. So that's just a little bit of language around zoos. Let me come back and just check in with you where you all are. Right, got some nice examples coming up here. Dogs are kept in captivity. They are sometimes. Yes. A very interesting question from Vinid. To some extent, the pet animals are in captivity at home. Right. This is a really interesting point, right? Um, yes. Pet animals, pets. We could just say pets, actually. Pets are in captivity at home. Somebody once asked the question, is your pet, sorry, is your dog a pet or a prisoner? A pet or a prisoner? And it makes you think, well, they're on a leash or a lead. They can't go out freely. They do everything I do. Ooh, is your dog a pet or a prisoner? Hmm, <gasps> interesting this is nice, Jugal. Nice bit of practice. Wild species are kept in captivity in cages. Even difficult for me, right? <laughs> kept. Kept, but not, not capped, but kept, right? Great. Dr. Yogesh, thank you very much. I'm great. Thank you very much. Right. Ah, now, Shilpa, brilliant. You've brought up a really, really good point here, right? So here, tiger is an endangered animal. Are you talking about one tiger? Like just one, Harry the tiger, 
look, there's Tim or Tom the tiger. Probably not, right? You're talking about a number of tigers or a species of tiger, like the white tiger. So what do you think it should be? That's right. Well done. You're very smart. Tigers, right, are an endangered animal, right? Even though it's an endangered animal, right? Tigers, it must be. Tigers are an endangered animal, right? So this is a really good point. There is another way we can say this, and I'm going to share it with you because I think this is, again, it's one of the very, 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 very common mistakes. Tigers are an endangered animal. And I am very thankful and grateful, Shilpa, because this is really good um, to share with everybody. Tigers, right? So let's get that right. Tigers are an endangered animal. Or you can say the tiger is an endangered animal. The tiger, right? And here, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but that we, we're saying not the tiger, a particular tiger, but just the tiger. Why do we say that? We do. We say the tiger, you're referring to the species. The species of the tiger is an endangered animal. So you can use either the tiger, not tiger, no, the tiger is an endangered animal, or tigers are an endangered animal, right? Brilliant. Thank you very much for sharing that. That's really nice. Oh, here's an expression, a nice one from Sonia. Brink of extinction. Yeah, let's give, let's go the full hog, the whole Monty. They are on the brink of extinction. And I'm going to paste and copy so I can put it in the notes and share. They are on the brink of extinction, right? About to disappear, basically. Yeah, brilliant, nice. So am I able to add that to my notes? Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Yes, I am. Sonia, great. Nice. Let me come back. I've lost your comments, everybody. So sorry. Pandas are endangered, right? Extinct, right. Extinct means disappear. Peer. Anshu. So Anshu asks, extinct, extinct. Uh, great question. So extinct just means... So let's get it really clear. To become extinct means to disappear. To become extinct. And as I said before, right, don't just learn extinct. Learn the collocation to become extinct or to be extinct if it's already, right, is to disappear. Um, so no more exist, right? So the, the great northern rhino in Africa is becoming extinct. There's only two left, <laughs> both females, only two left. So it's becoming extinct. The dodo is extinct. So extinct, to be extinct is the noun. and we But we've also got the other noun, extinction. So um, this expression is a really nice expression. On the brink of extinction means about to become extinct. Excellent. That's it. <sighs> Good question from Anton. Are fishes in a fish tank, fish tank cage? No, not really. Because a cage has to be a cage, right? So just let's get clear, show you what a cage is, because you may not all know what a cage is. Um, so Anton, if I just get rid of you, excuse me. <laughs> so here, these are cages, right? Different kinds of cages. So a bird, yes, is in a cage. Uh, a lion, a tiger is in a cage. A fish, no, fish is in a fish tank or a fish bowl. We wouldn't consider that to be a cage. No, not really. Right, a nice collocation here, right? To save endangered animals, such as tigers and pandas. So nice collocation, save endangered animals. Great. Brilliant. <laughs> we have a cat activist. 
Keeping cats in captivity is not fair. Freedom to cats. Abro. <laughs> right. Now, again, coming back to singular and plural, right? KK, this is good. Zoos snatch the freedom of animals as they have to live in cages. This is really good. So snatch is to grab or to take quickly, to take away. Now, are you talking about one zoo or zoos in general? Right, so KK, what should you say? Exactly, we are on the ball, love it, right? Zoos, generally, zoos snatch the freedom of animals, generally, as they have to live in cages. Fan dabby dozy, nice. <laughs> right. And here's an okay, another good uh, one to point out from Maestro. Maestro, guru, teacher. Pandas are not anymore in the list of endangered animals. Ah, right, on the list. I didn't know that. I didn't know that, but that's good to know. Good for the pandas. Yeah. So Vienhard brings up a good point and also brings up takes up the whole screen. <laughs> I think it would be better if... The animals live freely. Like Komoda Island, they have their own place. Or rhinoceros in their own area. They are not captivated in a cage. In a cage. So, yeah, you would need in cages or in a cage. It's a good point, right? It's a very good point because animals, as well as zoos, we can have animals who are in a, a natural park, right? We often call it a natural park or a conservation park where they are allowed to roam freely, um, but they are protected, right? So some interesting language there, right? Let's, let's share that with you on here. In a conservation park, sometimes we, let's put an, a natural park. There are different names, and I know in different countries they use slightly different names. Um, Animals, because we're talking about generally, are allowed to roam. There's a nice word, right? It's to walk. Uh, to walk, to roam. To walk without direction. A bit like ramble. <laughs> they are allowed to roam freely, right? To roam freely. That's a quite a common collocation. So make a note of that. Great. In a conservation park, animals are allowed to roam freely. Yeah, it's good. It's all good language. Talking of good language, let's move very quickly just to talk a little bit about wild animals language. And again, I'm just focusing on some quick quick wins, some nice language. Um, herbivore. Okay. I'm not sure if you know this word, so I'm going to check. Give me an example in the in your text box tell me the name of a herbivore let's see who knows what a herbivore is let's have a look a herbivore oh nice herbivore mohammed is very very quick right he says and i'll just get rid of me herbivores eat plants right excellent herbivores eat plants plant eating great why can't i get you here rag rag have why is in the list substituted with on the list it's in the list it's on the list I guess you could say both uh, Vesovolod, but I think on the list is more common. But you maybe you're right. Maybe you can say both. It's a good question. Right. Animals, herbivores, cows, deers, horses. Yeah. Cow, again, be really careful, right? I want you, all of you, on the ball today. Cows are herbivores right not cow is herbivore but thank you very much Angshu for bringing this up cows are herbivores 
right? Great. Others, rabbits, brilliant. Okay, you've got it. So they eat plants. What about carnivore? Give me an example of a carnivore. Herbivores, whoops. Give me an example of a carnivore just while I update my notes. Cows, cows, cows. Oh, come on. Rabbits, horses, dun, 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 dun. Carnivores. Carne. There's the Latin root. Any Spanish or Italian speakers will know what this is straight away. Carne. Right. Carnivores, we've got... Oh, come on. Come on, my friend. No, nope, it's not working for some reason. Oh dear. I can't get you. Oh, why is that? Okay. Something's happened to my notes, to the comments. Your comments are frozen. They've disappeared. Or I can't bring you in. Oh dear. Okay, now I can. <laughs> Carne, por favor. <laughs> Give me meat. Um, snakes are carnivores. Maybe they are. A lion is a carnivore. That's great. You can say that. A lion is a carnivore. Tigers, lion, crocodiles. So any meat-eating animal, right? That's the key thing. Great. I'm sorry about the comments. They're not working properly. So this is a meat-eating animal. Oh, meat eating animals great such as lion tiger human <laughs> some humans not all of them certainly not all of them uh, so lions tigers crocodiles um all of those right somebody said snakes i think some snakes yes a mammal right last no mammal and marsupial Give me first mammal. What is a mammal? Carnivores. We've got mammals. Oh, nice. I've got, we've got some nice answers here, but I'm afraid I can't. Uh, why can't I do this? Warm blooded animal that feeds its young on milk. Great. It is. A mammal is a warm-blooded animal that feeds its young on milk. Humans are mammals, exactly as Yo-Yo as Yo -Yo says. No, I can't add. That's such a shame. I can't add your comments anymore. I'm really sorry about that. Whales. Okay, I'm just going to take your comments and add them because you, you've got them here. Um... So mammals, warm-blooded, the young feed on milk. I think there's a few other things you could add, but you've got humans, whales is a good one. What else did you have? Dogs, dolphins, bears, yeah, all of those. Dogs, dolphins, bears. Brilliant. Marsupial, as some of you pointed out, the uh, the young live in a pouch. And I think I'm right in saying they are native to Australia. I think it's the only country that has marsupials. And some of you have given examples kangaroo let's see other examples you've got of marsupials not an easy word to say right try and say it with me marsupial a bit like chicken soup soupial marsupial any other examples of marsupials anybody
kangaroos koala very good koala bears which are not actually koalas at all <laughs> koala a whale is not a marsupial <laughs> wombats excellent wombats there's lots of them in australia right there's there's all sorts um koalas yes zebras are mammals yes koalas great yeah platypus i think you're right i think that is a uh, is a marsupial platypus possums that's the other one possums yes brilliant the dingo is the dingo wallabies absolutely so the wallaby is very similar to the the kangaroo excellent good okay so nice we've got some like keywords there about wild animals so let's come back um i'd like to find out more about pets okay um so as i said at the start we're going to talk a little bit about pets zoos and wild animals let's talk about pets first um and this question why do people have pets why do people have pets right I don't have a pet, but I wonder why other people have pets. What do you think? Why do people have pets? Hmm. Right, I'll get rid of me again for entertainment. Absolutely. um yeah good to keep this a nice one to keep people company for security is good for security right i wonder if i can oh this is so annoying because they I can't share your comments. It's so annoying. It's interesting to spend time them with them. They feel emotionally connected to pets. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I'm not talking about wild animals anymore. I'm talking about pets. So have fun when they're tired. Okay, so let me share, because I can't, for some crazy reason, can't share your comments, which is so frustrating. Um, but let's put some here. So we've got for security. I'll just put a few ideas down, share them with you in a few simple words that you've put there, right? Let's just change the font. For security, some of you said for company. Oh... Change the font. Bear with me. I'm not going to do this every time. <laughs> For security, um, they symbolize a sense of welfare. That's interesting. Symbolize a sense of welfare. Or maybe well being, right? Maybe you mean well being is slightly better. Symbolize a sense of well being. Um, they keep you company. Somebody has said, great. What else have you said? They're cute and cheerful. <laughs> In today's isolated life, they want a companion, so they have pets. Yes. Nice. In today's isolated life, they want a companion is nice. Companion is a nice word, right? So we've got company and then we've got a companion. Company, we say keep you company, right? So nice, nice development of that word. It gives them pleasure. Companionship. There you go again, right? For companionship. Com companionship great word again it's this all based around the same idea 
but showing some great flexibility here with the words. People are lonely. They need someone to take care of them. Sense of belonging to curb loneliness. Jivan, brilliant. Let's add that one to curb loneliness. Why is my font gone so strange? To Not to turn, to curb. Come on. <laughs> so to curb loneliness, right, is to, to, well, to prevent, really, or to reduce, to curb loneliness. Very, very nice. They make us happy if we're sad. People don't want to be lonely. Right, some great ideas, right? Okay. <clears throat> They fill their lack of love with pets. Right, great. Ah, I can get you back in. I can get some of you back in. They, they, Because they're filling their lack of love with pets. Yeah, if they've got nobody around them. Absolutely. Pets are comforting companions. Nice word. Great. Um, security to show off this is also true right somebody says to show off we like to show off our dogs to others right um they also help us build relationships with others right um help us meet other people they help us meet other people so true because whether you are um walking your dog in the park or People come to your house and see your cat. It's a great conversation starter. It's a great way to break the ice. Um, oh, I see you've got a, a dash hound. How long have you had it? Oh, is it male or female? Or oh, what's he like? Is he Does he take after you? Or is he very mischievous? Right. And what pet food do you give him? Oh, me too. Great conversation. I mean, you meet somebody with a dog, instant bonding instant building of rapport because you both know you're either both lonely or you're either both uh, not feeling safe and you need something guarding and so you've got this rapport you can build instantly so it, it is a great way not only to show off but to meet other people as well right um, it's a way to socialize yeah absolutely now a quick point here right um in IELTS speaking part three, you often get this kind of question, right? Why do people do something? Why do people have pets? Now, often you can find you're giving an answer that's very, very wide, right? Well, people have pets for security or they want companionship and you start going very, very wide. A very simple technique with this question is to choose a group of people, right? So choose maybe old people, young people, people who live in houses, people who live in the countryside. Choose one group of people and go deep into your answer because by choosing one group of people, people you're being very specific and giving very detailed answer. So your vocabulary is going to be much wider and much more in-depth, right? Part three of IELTS speaking is going deeper and deeper and deeper. It's not just being fluffy and talking very generally. So here, for example, you could say, well, why do people have pets? Well, people, let's take people who live in the countryside. Those people often have large properties that um, are kept don't, no, they have large properties that are often left empty or unattended. And so they often need guard dogs and they're very partial to guard dogs who can look after the security of the property and make sure there are no burglars going to come in and steal stuff um, because very often they may not be there. So people in the countryside may want a special kind of pet, often a guard dog, that will keep thieves and burglars away right so can you see i've answered the question but being very specific it's much easier for me because i'm just focusing on that one line and also vocabulary burglar thief um unattended guard dog suddenly some very rich vocabulary comes out 
right? So that's a nice thing to do, right? Choose or focus on one group of people for this kind of question. It's a very, very nice technique. If you think your answer is too short, then add another group, right? So you could say, and in addition to people who live in the countryside, I think people who live in the city nowadays feel so lonely that they want companionship. And so they turn to dogs and cats to help curb the loneliness that they may feel um, in the big city, right? And again, it's easier for me because I'm focusing on one group of people. Does that make sense? Nod your head if it makes sense. I wish I could see you, but I can't see you. Right, excellent. Yeah, nice. So you're picking it up here, right? Some great examples here. Petra, some disabled people have trained dogs as pets. Blind people have pets to help them navigate in their daily day life, their daily life. Petra, fantastic, great. So you've got the idea. Um, Mrs. Hassan, people who live in the countryside. Some pets are the main source of income, such as cows. They sell cow's milk. Right, exactly. It's interesting. You could consider cows as pets. I mean, are farm animals pets? I don't know, actually. That's an interesting question. You could probably get away with that. Yeah. Great. Giant hog as well. For old people. Ba, 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 ba. They often feel lonely and isolated. With the companion of pets, they would feel loved and wanted. Yeah. It also helps them um, keep a routine life. Love it. Brilliant. So you've picked it up. You've absolutely got it. That's what you want to be doing there, I think. Nice. Great. Let's move on to another question, right? I'm going to move on now to talk about zoos right? Zoos. <laughs> People are saying, what's a zoo? Zoos, like whew, this one here. Zoos, where we um, animals are kept in captivity, right? Where animals like wild cats are kept in captivity in cages. <laughs> Zoos, good or bad, right? Zoos, good or bad. Well, I'm going to do with you a little, a little thing here. Let's do... Let me copy the link. I'm going to do this on Menti because Menti is quite fun to do as well. So bear with me. I'm going to do a poll with you. I want to find out uh, what your opinion is on this. So bear with me. Will this work here? It might work here. Indeed, it might. Excellent. Let me just close up here. Turn on here. I'm going to close the animal thing. Right. Zoos. Are zoos a good thing? <sighs> zoos are a good thing. True or false? Now. Mm -hmm. Okay, bear with me. That's good, but it's not good. <laughs> it's not good, he says, because it's not working. Bear with me. Be patient. Have a drink. Always need to have a little bit of a gap, right? And a drink. Okay, I think we're in. I think we're in. Now then. I want you to have a look. I'll get rid of me, basically. Um, I want you to go to menti.com, right? And in menti.com, you will see www.menti.com and use the code 81 zero six nine three one okay can you see that at the top www.menti.com i can see the problem now i can see my problem menti.com and use the code eight one zero six nine three one there you go i'll try and make it bigger me and technology. Brilliant. Well done, Keith. <laughs> I'm just putting your answer right. Zoos are a good thing. True or false? 
www.menti.com. The code is 8106931. Oh, now this is getting into an interesting debate, right? Look at this. We've got 36 people saying, saying what? Saying false. We've got 33 people saying it's true. Zoos are a good thing. 51 people saying false. Now, that's interesting. I'll give you a, a second, a few of you, just to add your ideas. But at the moment, the balance is uh, that it's false, that zoos are not a good thing. Right, the trues are catching up, but still 74 of you say that zoos are not a good thing. And I wonder why. So if you said it's not a good thing, why are they not a good thing? And listen, oh, the, the tigers are catching up. The zoos are a good thing, they're catching up. Why are they a good thing? Come and tell me. <clears throat> Right, gosh. Okay, I'm going to close that for the moment. You can still vote, but I'm going to close it for the moment. I'm going to switch into our notes. Zoos being a good or a bad thing. And let's see exactly why are they a good or a bad thing. Give me your comments in the box and let's share them. Mitra, sitting on the fence, but good. Both. Good to preserve endangered animals, good entertainment and bad because animals cannot roam freely. Well done. I like it. That's me clapping. Uh, okay. Zoos allow scientists to study on animals. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> right. Uh, it's an artificial habitat. It says Kanam. Again, is that good or bad? My guess is it's bad because if it's not natural, they're not living in a natural way. Um, predators like tigers, they forget how to hunt um, and so they can no longer look after themselves. They're dependent on the zookeepers. Hmm. Right. Ishmit, they provide knowledge to children while in schools. That's also true. Very, very good. So zoos are a good thing for the safety of people. Now, that's interesting, Liz. Do you mean that, therefore, the tigers can't attack us? Is that what you mean? Right. This is an interesting debate because also um, we've got other ideas. No, we haven't because the thing's gone. Ah, can I get you back in? Okay. Okay. Pals, I'm on the fence on this one. That's a lovely expression. I'm on the fence. <laughs> Love it. I'm on the fence with this one. Um, I love animals in their natural habitats, but as the world is developing, animals are on the brink of extinction. Well done. Zoos are perfect venue for them to breed. Breed is a nice word, right? To grow and to have young or youth, young, young animals. Okay. Great. Patel says, if I talk about positives, then zoos are best for the conservation of extinct species. Right. Now, you have to change that because if it's extinct, they don't exist, right? You can't conserve them. So we would have to change that. The conservation of species becoming extinct, right? Obviously, they're not extinct because that means they've disappeared. But for the conservation of species becoming extinct. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Khan says, I'm in two minds. So listen, let me, uh, let me bring this in because as a nice way to start this answer, I'm on the fence uh, on this one. That means, right, I'm undecided. It's a nice expression. I'm in two minds about this. Again, undecided. 
Yeah, I'm on the fence on this one. I'm in two minds on this one. I'm in two minds about this. Um, great. So you've got different arguments. Let's see if I can just capture some of them. Um, oh, what did we have? Okay, we've got some here from Manas. Cages um, and living conditions are too cramped. Nice. Great for the animals. They need liberty and freedom. Liberty and freedom, somebody said. They need liberty and freedom. Nice. Great. Um, some countries have bad zoos. Yep, not good for the entertainment. Um, they can help educate children. Nice. Very, very good. Zoos can help educate children. Um, animals lose their instincts. For example, how to hunt. And often become depressed. I mean, this is interesting, right? Uh, because we don't really know if they become depressed, but there are studies on animals that show their behavior changes radically in zoos and they exhibit depression-like behavior. Um, so, gosh, that there are arguments against it and for it, absolutely. <clears throat> so this one, I guess, is a... I, what I'll do later is I'll capture your arguments, right? And I will put them into the for and against kind of that's against du keith <laughs> against and for yeah there's lots of more arguments and we'll capture them i'm just aware of time <clears throat> so because of time i'm going to move on a bit we're running short of time as always it goes so quick why is it that in my class time speeds up <clears throat> all of a sudden <coughs> Um, we're talking about zoos. I do want to talk a little bit um, before we finish up about um, animals, right? Wild animals, because we talked about pets, we talked about zoos, talking about wild animals um, and in particular model answers, because I do like to just spend a few minutes in each class doing a model answer, not so that you can, you know, memorize it, but just to give you an idea of the very natural English that can be used. And I do try to keep it as natural as possible. It's not always easy. And then after the class, you'll get the transcript in the PDF notes and you can check it and look at the really interesting language. You know, listen out, not just for the fancy vocabulary, but for the natural English, right? The, well, you know, maybe. I'm undecided. I'm in two minds about this, this kind of very natural English language, which is really, really useful. So the, the model answer, I need you to ask me a question about wild animals, right? The topic is wild animals. Um, ask me a question in the chat box, any question about wild animals, and I will try and give you a model answer. <laughs> Oh, okay. We've got one in. Come in, come in. So, over here. I'll put you here. Tell me about a time you saw a wild animal. Where, how do you feel? Okay, only one question. <laughs> I know you're trying to do the cue card, right? <clears throat> right. <clears throat> Wait a minute. <clears throat> well, it's an interesting question because I, I live in the city, so I don't get a lot of access to wild animals, as you can imagine. Um, but I do remember once when we were out trekking in the, in the mountains, we went through a forest. It's not far from where I live, actually. And um, whilst we were going through the forest, um, suddenly, out of the blue, we saw this fox. 
and I didn't know there were foxes in that forest. Um, but, you know, lo and behold, there it was. It was a lot bigger than I imagined. As I mentioned, I, I live in the city, so I don't see many wild animals. Um, but this fox was almost the size of a, of a wolf. Um, and what was interesting was it was really scared of us. It was more scared of us than we were of it. Um, so it kind of peeped up from behind the bush. It looked at us and then scurried away to run away and escape. Obviously, it was afraid of humans. Um, so I, I felt surprised to see how big it was and how scared it was. But it's a really interesting experience um, that time that I saw a fox in, in the forest near where I live. Hmm. There you go. Right. Interesting, right? So, <laughs> some interesting language. Um, and of course, I can't remember it because my brain is going so fast. But as I said, we'll pick this out later and you can go back. Okay, I'll do one more here. Uh, peach pêche. Hello, les pêches. Is interesting, English and French. Do you think zoos... Well, okay, I'm just going to change that because if it's zoos... In the plural, generally speaking, zoos are. Do you think zoos are a good way to preserve wild animals? Okay, preserve. Again, I'm going to make a small change here and I'll explain why. Because preserve is ambiguous. Um, we do talk about preserving nature and preserving animals, but also we talk about preserved vegetables when we put them in vinegar and preserved meat when we put it in maybe vinegar or salt or smoke. So there is a danger that this might mean putting the wild animals in, in vinegar to eat them, right? It's ambiguous, but it could mean to conserve wild animals. Um, I'm going to, so I don't, so I can focus better, conserve wild animals, right? Both are correct. It's just that preserve is slightly ambiguous. Okay. Do you think zoos are a good way to conserve wild animals? I tell you what, if in the IELTS test you have, I don't, you can't take water. If you could have water, it's a great way to gain time, right? Well, it's an interesting question. And I think I'm in two minds about this. Um, I know that by and large, um, the scientific research points in the direction to suggest it's not a good way to conserve wild animals um, because the wild animals are kept in captivity, often in small cramped places. They lose their instinct, um, whether that be how to hunt, how to look after their young or how to socialize. And so they become depressed and they change their behavior. And so really they're not surviving as a species. If we were to let them out into the wild, they would die within a week. So I think we really have to question whether we're really conserving the wild animals, the species, for the long term. Um, that said, there are certain animals, maybe endangered animals, on the brink of extinction that need more protection. Otherwise, they will die out. And so for those animals, it may be plausible to put them in captivity, um, preferably a natural park where they can roam freely um, and be closer to nature. And so that, yes, in that case, that may be a, a better way to conserve the species. Right. Good. Nice. Right. I think I was... It's interesting because it actually helped me when we prepared the vocabulary on the brink of extinction, roam freely. It came quite naturally to use those. So thank you for the preparation. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. Okay, I'll do one more. I realize we're over time, but if you're happy to stick around, I'll do one more. Um, what wild animal do you like and why? Okay, so last question. And I think this looks like a kind of, in IELTS speaking, probably a part one question, right? What wild animal do you like and why? So I'll keep it fairly short. 
<laughs> it's my lifesaver. And if you're wondering, those are red dates at the bottom. I'll eat them later after the class. What wild animal do you like, Keith? Um, I'm a big fan of elephants. I think elephants are curious and amazing creatures. Um, I've seen elephants on the television, not in real life, where they're trained to do amazing things um, from almost acrobatics to painting with their um, trunk. Um, and I just think they're lovely creatures and they seem very sociable and very friendly. Although, of course, in the wild, I'm sure they're much, much more aggressive. But they are typically an animal that humans like to tame. And uh, I think they're wonderful. Bit of a long answer, but interesting stuff. Right. <laughs> That's it for wild animals and everything else. So great. Guys, we have looked at today, coming back to my little thingy, we've been talking about animals. We've been talking about pets, zoos and wild animals. Few model answers. Um, we're going to finish up with a kahoot as always because I do like you to review the vocabulary and I like to I like to keep you on your toes right keep you on your toes means to keep you alert and awake so throughout the class you should be thinking what's he going to test us on which vocabulary or grammar am I going to test you on um, so I've got a few questions we'll do it in kahoot and we'll have a bit of fun to find out what you've learned from today. Okay, as always, give me a second to find it. Kahoot, it just take a second, won't be a minute. Um, and as you're having a look at this, just to remind you, if you want, because people are always asking me, what's the website address? What's the website address? That's the website address right there. And if uh, Kahoot, if you don't know, if it's your first time, Kahoot is an interesting way for us to play some games um, and to practice our vocabulary. It's quite fun and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So just give me a second. OK, here we go. So we're going to look at the, uh, the teach mode. Teach over here. I'm going to disappear. You'll need to go somewhere to do this because you're going to participate, right? So basically, you need to go to Kahoot, www.kahoot.it. You can see at the top. Um, put in the number 127038. Add your name and Bob's your uncle. You're ready to go. And we will start in about a minute. So I can see quite a few of you are coming in already. I'll just turn the music down a tad. A tad means a little. Just turn it down a tad. T-A-D. Okay. So we've got who's in there? Lots of people. Gurdip, Tien, the Gurdip, Kengel, Gurdip, Sandu, Jim, Elisa. Elisa from Brazil, Gina, Pim, Brish, Malas, who almost won the other day. Right, We've got 154 of you. I'll just give you a few seconds and then we'll start up. One of the best things about this is actually just the, uh, the music. And do remember, um, if you can't get into Kahoot, and not everybody can, um, then you can just put your answer in the chat box. Okay. Uh, Ayushi, my next class is next Tuesday. So it's every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 o'clock. Yeah, I like to keep you on your toes. Okay, let's kick off. Animals. I like ba ba ba. Okay, so what is it? Is it dog? A dog? Dogs? A dogs. What's the right answer? You've got 20 seconds left.
Let's see who is on their toes. I like dogs. 135. Not bad, but could be better. <laughs> Like my teacher used to say at school, could do better. Not bad. Dogs, right? Do you remember at the start we said we're talking about all dogs in general? So it should be I like dogs, not dog, not a dog. That's just one. And if it's just one, you say I like this dog or my dog. But generally speaking, I like dogs. Right. Remember that. And of course, for all animals. Scoreboard. So who got it right the quickest? Zaled or Exaled. And look now and Kylie coming in. Flo, you're on the ball, aren't you? Always on the ball. Question number two. In zoos, animals are kept blank captivity. Come on, this is a piece of cake. <laughs> Dum, dum, dum. Ten seconds left. Two, one. Wow, fantastic. Now that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see every time. Um, animals are kept in captivity. Remember? Caps are Cats are kept in captivity in cages. That's your song twister for the week. Remember that one. Brilliant. So let's check after that. Who's on the top? Oh, Zaled has lost his place. Look now. Look now has moved up and Flo. Look out. Flo's on your back. She'll be there soon. Or he. I don't know. Question three. A kangaroo is a... A mammal, a marsupial, an amphibian, or a bear? Tricky question. <laughs> Ten seconds. I'll give you a clue. Kangaroos are from Australia. fantastic they are marsupials right kangaroos are marsupials because they carry their young in their pouch they do feed them milk like mammals but this is a separate species they are marsupials like the wombat the koala bear and others right lovely let's see who's top of the pops Wow! i told you look out for flow look out on the ball, absolutely. So, Zaled is still up there in second place. Look now in third. It's like a, a three-horse race, this one is. Let's move on to the fourth and final question. We should protect mm, animals. We should protect mm, animals. Dum, 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 dum. Um, so that's like Sherlock Holmes or Jason Bourne. Dum, 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 dum. Great music. Some good answers in the chat box. Oh, now that's now we're cooking. <laughs> now we're cooking means now we're really getting serious. Brilliant. Endangered. We should protect endangered animals right now 34 of you said extinct you cannot protect an extinct animal because extinct means it's disappeared it's gone already so be careful with that right endangered animals well done brilliant so let's find out um who has won the game this week here's the podium Who's first? Third. Ondonula. Zaled came second and first. 
Oh, it's luck now. Straight in. Came from third place up to second place and now conquered the world in first place. Excellent. Well done. You have been lucky. You had some luck now. Or maybe you were just on your toes. I don't know. Well done, you. Excellent. Well done. Very, very nice. So listen, guys, thank you all of you very much for joining me today. It's been great. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, if you are, please do remember to, of course, subscribe. Turn on that funny little notification bell over here um, so you can find out about the new things coming up, the new videos coming up. Um, I'll just turn that off. Great. And just to remind you, for those of you who are interested, um, and if it's the right time for you, I do have this course. It's an online course on Udemy. Um, the link will be in the notes in the PDF later, um, but it's called IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band 7 Plus. If you think that's right for you, go and check it out. It might help you out. And there's the Facebook group, of course, and there is the website you can go and check out and get the notes from today. So that's it. It's a big, big thank you from me. Thank you for joining me. It's been great to see you here and hear about all these really interesting um, ideas and debates, right, about zoos, animals and things. Great. Um, I'm always looking for new um, topics to have in our live class. So if you've got any ideas, do let me know in the comments box. In the meantime, next class, next week, Tuesday, Thursday, 10 o'clock Spanish time, Tuesday and Thursday, 10 o'clock Spanish time on YouTube or in the Facebook group. You can also watch it there. You can also watch it on the website, I think, but best in YouTube or Facebook. That's it, my friends. Take care. I've enjoyed this lesson very, very much and I can't wait to see you next time. All the best now. Bye-bye.